In this brief video, we're going to do a real quick review about the basic flexural deformation model from a theory standpoint, and then we're going to look at a moment area theorem definition of things. We're not going to derive the theorems, but we are going to present them and define the terms. In another video, we'll uh, execute an application. Right, so frequently in structural performance, we need to try to have an understanding of how much a, a member will deflect. In, we're focused right now on bending types of deformations and displacements, whether there's rotations at the ends of the member or over supports, whether they are um, how much is the maximum under the response to the load, that sort of thing. We learned back in the statics view of the world that our load shear and moment were related to each other through differential equations, that the rate of change of the moment was equal to the shear, the rate of change of the shear was equal to the load intensity, the load being defined as a distributed load. And if we're being precise to a Cartesian coordinate system here, then even though our distributed loads on our beams tend to be uh, physically going downwards, positive upwards in your calculus kind of perspective is the definition of our sign convention here. So dv dx equals q, dm dx equals v. Put both of those together, we get one second order differential equation involving the, uh, in essence, the acceleration or second derivative of the moment with respect to the, uh, with respect to x, and then that's equal to the load intensity. Then in the solid mechanics course, we relate what the bending moment is to this curvature. Curvature defined the same way it is in calculus, that the first derivative of this deflected, uh, deflection shape would be, of course, the slope, and the second would be curvature, or concave up, concave down, and that's related to the moment through that proportionality constant that becomes E, the elastic, uh, constant or elastic stiffness of the material and that second moment of area of the cross section. And when you put all that together, we end up with a single governing differential equation that is a fourth order differential equation. And we have end up with two force related boundary conditions and two displacement uh, related boundary conditions. And normally speaking, taking the whatever the load turns out to be in our model and integrating it somehow four times, solving for all those constants in a straightforward calculus kind of way is usually not all that convenient and oftentimes not at all simple. And so there have been many different techniques over the years to begin to simplify that model and particularly tune it to something convenient that likely happens in structural mechanics. One of those ideas along the way was the moment area method. And then just simply recognizing what that relationship is between moment curvature and then those basic calculus um, relationships between the first derivative of a function and the function itself and then the second derivative, again, slope and second order effects, or not second order, but rather um, second derivative or, or curvature things. And then, of course, going the other way, that any integral could be thought of as an area under some sort of curve. And the, the key thing is going to be, again, that moment curvature relationship. If we go and divide the moment by whatever the EI is, we end up with the M over EI diagram, or what we would say is the curvature diagram. And so all we have to do is integrate this twice in order to get to then what we typically want, our deflected shape or specific values of the uh, transverse deflection. And that's all we're really doing in the moment area method is taking advantage of that kind of notion. Right? So if we take one integral of kappa, then we're going to end up taking, oh, integrate curvature, we're going to get something associated with slope. Now if it's a definite integral, then we'll get a delta change in slope. But now since we have small deflections to begin with, and small rotations or slopes, then what we find out is that tangent of theta is approximately equal to theta in radians. So we often talk, times talk, instead of about the slope, we'll, we'll talk about the rotation itself. And note, hey, a change in slope is a definite integral associated with our curvature. And so, oh, that, a change in slope, which is really now a change in 
the angle. I know that seems weird. Delta here is not a symbol, a Greek symbol, but rather, well, it is, but, but it means, of course, a change in or a deviation in is what, what, what's really going on. So if we draw a tangent to the elastic curve at two locations, then the angle between those, or the deviation between those two tangents, is what we're after here. So that would be theta b with respect to a, and that's just given to us by the area under the m over ei diagram, which is the curvature diagram, between points a and b. And since we are actually looking at an integral, if we go one direction where b is the upper limit, a is the lower one, and then we go the other way, we actually get, and you know, reverse that calculus-wise, that would be a to b, that integral would be the opposite uh, from b to a. So there is some sense of what this area under this curve might mean. The positive means positive angles would be, of course, a counterclockwise uh, motion. That would be a left to right kind of perspective here, right? That the tangent at A, A is located to the left of B, and we got this positive uh, area under the M over E I diagram. That meant the sag that we see here, this kind of curvature, right? Positive bending moment, positive curvature, concave up is what that's talking about. And so that's what we mean by this positive angular deviation. Now the other thing that, that we're oftentimes interested in is not just slope changes, but we'd like to know eventually how much of a displacement we might have at one specific spot. Now we'll get into the, in the application here what how to calculate, hey, this original position B on the undeflected beam and then it deflects down to the new place, that little direct distance that would be our delta sub B where now this delta refers not to a change, but that's typically the symbol that we use for a displacement, transverse type displacement. And note that if I go back and look at this tangent back here that's at point A in its displaced position, then as it extends out and is directly under where position B is, there's a vertical offset. That vertical offset has the symbol in the drawing of TBA, that's T sub B A, that stands for the tangential deviation at B with respect to a tangent at A, is what that is. So that's just that vertical distance, again, from the tangent up to or down to the uh, new position that we're interested in on the elastic deflected shape. And that's going to be given to us by now the first moment of area under the M over EI diagram between points A and B. And that is taken, as in the moment arm is, taken with respect to the point of interest, which in this case would be point B. Now, none of this is a derivation of it. You can kind of see it directly for the change in the angle, and that's just an integral, so therefore area under the curve, so that makes a lot of sense. But it may not be quite so apparent that this next one is the first moment of area under the M over EI diagram between those two points taken with respect to point B. That's something that you need to go take a look at, um, a different video to see where the, that derivation comes from. Right now we're just trying to define the terms. So if we were doing T, B with respect to A, this moment arm that I'm referring to is measured from B over to the centroid of this area, whatever that uh, area shape might be. We'd use, again, that'd be this area AB times X bar B would be our TB with respect to A. On the other hand, if we wanted TA with respect to B, which is not the same thing as the other one, then we're going to take, it's that same area, but the different moment arm 
involved, right? And so, you know, one of the, the critical things to recognize here is that there is a sign element to all this, but for most people, they don't like working with the absolute um, oh, absolute sign convention associated with moment area method. They would rather look at it, figure out what's going on in uh, not into it, but certainly just look at what the numbers are and judge from the numbers what they're going to call positive negative as they deal with these first moments of area and left to right, right to left business. It's just a little bit easier to, to understand it intuitively as opposed to try to just blindly apply it, not really understand it, but somehow have some mathematical formula that you can plug and chug and then that will get you an answer. It never works that easily. Um, it's actually a lot easier to eventually learn what the in, how to develop the intuition about what's going on here. So just to wrap up, we have two moment area theorems, one that gets us the change in angle between two tangents drawn to the elastic deflected curve. That's just simply the area be, of, under the M over EI diagram between those two points. And then we can calculate tangential deviations, which is going to be equal to the first moment of this area with respect to the point in question. And that's going to turn out to be useful. It may not look like it yet, but that gets into the application side of things. And that's what we'll do in a different video.